and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we will learn how to make this really pretty shawl. This pattern can be used as a full size shawl and can also be used as a neck scarf and I'll show you that one in the next clip. I've used different yarn for both and there is also a different border for the other shawl that I've made. The edging is very very similar. They both have that pretty edging but the other one will show you how to make a eyelet edge as well. So it's just a couple of varieties that you can use to make up your shawl. I love the way this yarn is coming out. It's turning out so pretty. I don't know what colour it's turning up on your screen. In my video camera it's looking quite pale. But this is a really bright vivid pink with the darker pink as well. And it's also got some glitter through it as well. If I can zoom in, you might be able to see the glitter. It's got a silvery coloured yarn as well as the pink mixed with it as well. And hopefully it shows up a lot better in the photos. Here is a different version of the shawl. This is a much smaller version. And this also has the very slightly different edging. Of course it's got little bobbly bits that you can see. That's the best way I can describe them right now. But this one has an eyelet edging as well to it which I guess just gives it a little bit of variation so I'll get closer and you can have a look at that as well. Now it's not really that much of a difference see these tiny little holes that we've got here this is the little eyelets that we've got running along the edge and the other version the pink version doesn't have that so it's just got this uh, single crochet row with no holes in it at all I've skipped the eyelet hole and then gone straight into the edging so that's just a little bit of a different um, look that you can put onto your shawl my blue version has 16 rows, not including the border. It has three rows on the border. And across the top, the measurements that we have is 24 inches across. So that's across the top edge. This is the bit that wraps around your neck. And the length of the shawl is almost 12 inches, including the border. And the pink version is almost 42 inches across the top edge and the length of the shawl is approximately 20 inches both of the yarns used in this project are from Red Heart this is a Red Heart Super Saver in the colour blue and you can also use with Love or any other softer yarns that you have by Red Heart. And the other pink version is the Boutique Midnight and I forgot to say the colourway. It's the colourway Radiant. And it's all pinks and purples and it's really really pretty. All these yarns can be purchased on redheart.com Also check out Red Heart for great free patterns and lots of inspiration. They have just revamped their website, so go and check it out. I will put all the links that you need in the description box. There is also a free written pattern for this shawl, and that will be located on my website. I will put all the links that you need in the description box. Any time that there is a free written pattern that goes with a video, it is always in the description box so that you can find it on my website. So let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies we're going to need some yarn. In the pinky coloured one that you saw I am using the Red Heart Boutique Midnight. These are 2.5 ounce and 70 grams. I've got two of these for my shawl. I'm basically just going to crochet it until it runs out. <laughs> and it's a number four weight yarn and it asks for a six millimetre crochet hook but I am actually using a 7mm because I want it to drape nicely. This isn't actually finished yet so I can't show you right at this stage of the video but of course you would have seen it at the beginning in the photos. For the tutorial I'm actually going to use Red Heart Super Saver in the colour blue. This is also a number 4 yarn and it calls for a 5.5mm crochet hook but I'm actually going to use again a bigger size crochet hook which is I'm going to use a six millimeter or a size J crochet hook 
because again I want it to have a nice drape. I'm using the blue for the tutorial because it's a lot easier to see. It's a plain yarn and it will show up better in the tutorial. We have a yarn needle with a large eye, a pair of scissors and also a crochet hook to go with the yarn. So whatever yarn you're using just make sure you use a crochet hook that is bigger than what you need because you want it to have a nice drape and if your crochet is too tight then it's going to be a really stiff scarf or shawl. To start off our shawl we're going to use a magic ring. I did try it with a chain four and join but it didn't look right just where the center of the shawl is so I'm, I've changed it to a magic ring. That's when I made my sample I'm, so I'm now changing it to a magic ring. I just wrap the yarn around my fingers take it off and then I just hold the ring go into the center with my crochet hook pull up the yarn and just pull through just to secure that there what we're going to do is we're going to chain three so we've got our first one already so two and three we want to work a double crochet into the ring chain one and double crochet into the ring again. We're going to chain two. The chain two is our corner chain two space and this will be the pointy section that's on the shawl. Into the magic ring again we're going to work double crochet, chain one double crochet and the double crochet chain one double crochet is a v-stitch so I may refer to that as a v-stitch in the pattern and then we're going to work one more double crochet into the ring and we can grab our end and pull that so that's gathered that together now if you find that the chain two is too tight for you I chain quite loosely so chain two is okay for me if you find that's too tight uh, you can use chain three as well or instead of the chain two. When we start our next row what we do is we work into the space between this stitch here and that stitch there so the second last and the last stitch of the row that's where we go into. So first of all we want to turn our work we're going to chain three this counts as the first double crochet so into that space between the first and the second stitches we're going to yarn over and work a double crochet. We're going to chain one and double crochet into that same stitch. Into our chain two corner space which is here we're going to work a V stitch so it's double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We're going to chain two because that's our corner chain two space and then we're going to work another v-stitch into here so that's double crochet chain one and double crochet now when we come to the end of our row what we do is we work into that same space that's at the end here and it's between the last stitch and the second last stitch so into that space here in there. We're going to work a V stitch so it's double crochet, chain one, double crochet and also we're going to work one double crochet in that same space. So that's what it's looking like so far and so on those on that row we've gained a space here and a space over here if you've done my rainbow shawl the granny stitch shawl then this is like that one there and if you've made a granny square before you know how you crochet into the space between the groups of three well that's what this shawl was like as well so now we're going to do chain three counts as our first double crochet into this space here we're going to work a v stitch and i won't from now on say double crochet chain one double crochet because it just be annoying so i'm just going to say v stitch when we need to do that 
So into here we're going to work a V-stitch. Into the space that's here we're going to work a V-stitch. And into the chain 2 space over here we're going to work a V-stitch. Chain 2 for our corner. And back into that same chain 2 space we're going to work another V-stitch. And I've just pulled that one over across like so. So then we've got some room here to work our V-stitch. So along this side we've got a space here. So we never work into the V-stitch, we're working into the spaces between them. So there's a V-stitch there and there. We're working into that space with my finger sticking out. So going into there, working a V-stitch. And when we work our last one we always work a V-stitch and a double crochet into that same space. We're going to turn, turn our work around. When we said turkey. <laughs> mm, turkey. We're going to chain three and into this space here we're going to work a v-stitch. And again we've got spaces in between our v-stitches which is here and here. So each row you're going to gain one more space and that's your chain two corner space up there. So working into the space for a V-stitch. Into the next space again with the V-stitch. Oops, chain one. Almost forgot. Making sure I did it back there. Into the chain two space we're going to work our corner so it's V stitch, chain two, I'm just pushing that over a little bit and then work a V stitch into that same space. And again on this side we've got two spaces so we need to work a V stitch into each of those. Grab some more yarn and into this last space here we're going to work V stitch and a double crochet. So back in that same space for the double crochet. And this is what our shawl is looking like. And you can move, so, uh, oh god, tongue tied. Along here it may sort of go out of shape but you can actually grab the stitches and just pull them over every second row. This row you can't but every second row you can and that will straighten up that edge. We are going to crochet along there to neaten it, neaten it up a little bit but if you find that these edges are going up in that direction it may mean that you need to make your chain three up here so it will um, pull down straight. But like I said, I do really loose crochet, so chain 2 is okay for me up here. So we continue on now for as many rows as we like. And this pattern doesn't matter how many rows that you do, the border works in with any amount of rows. Not like some of my other patterns you had to do like odd or even, but this one you can just make as many as you like. So continue on, and I'm going to make this one the neck shawl. Or a neck scarf or a scarflet there's all different names for them and the other pinky purpley one is just going to be like a proper size shawl or as many rows as the yarn will allow me to do like I said I haven't finished it off yet so I'm not sure how many I'll do but I will catch up with you when we have finished as many rows as you would like to do and then I can show you how to do the border 
the border for the shawl is different to the border for the neck scarf. The neck scarf has some eyelet holes with buttons and stuff, and the scarf, uh, the shawl doesn't. Just the smaller one has the button holes. Yeah, but the bigger shawl doesn't. Okay, but you can mix it up how you like, of course. And I will see you in just a moment when I've finished all my rows. With the two balls of the Red Heart Boutique Midnight, and that has 2.5 ounces, 70 grams, 155 yards or 140 meters. I was able to make a shawl, and this is a small shawl, like it, it, it's not really big, it just covers your shoulders to keep your shoulders warm. I've got in 25 rows, and then I've done the border. But for the border, I've gone straight into the border. I haven't done any single crochet rows or the eyelet rows or anything. I've just gone straight into that edging with our couple of chains and then we slip stitch back. So this one only has the last row of the border on it. And it's looking really pretty. As you can see, I need to sew in a couple of ends there. And, um, and it does lay flat. It's just how I've put it on the ground there. I haven't spread it out. So that's looking really, really pretty with that yarn. So I will show you what to do on the solid colour. It just shows up a lot better with the blue yarn that I'm using. And for the blue one, I'm making that with the single button on one side. And of course, if you use a bigger size, like if you've made this shawl this size, you could also put a button over here and over here. And you can use it to um, button up around your neck as well. Now, the blue one that I'm making isn't long enough to wrap around both sides of my neck, so it's just going to button up at the back. And this one is just going to be a normal shawl with no buttons at all. So there's three edgings to the whole shawl. Like I said, the pink one that I just showed you only had the very last row, so I didn't do these first two rows. What we're going to do is going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet in every stitch across. Don't work your single crochet too tight, because otherwise the edges of your shawl will gather in. And we don't want that to happen. So into the chain one space, we're going to single crochet and into the double crochet. So where there's a chain one space, which is there, we're going to go into the space. But then every other one, we're just going to go into the top of the stitch. find that you can't work your single crochet loose enough so it should just lay flat like that if you find it's crunching up you could use a bigger size crochet hook and that will give you some loose attention and will help it lay flat so single crochet all the way until we get to the corner when we get up to the chain two corner which is the point of the shawl we're going to work three single crochet This helps us go around the corner and it also helps with our stitch count as well because the stitch count is over three. And then we're just going to single crochet like we were doing on the other side and just complete this side. And I'll meet up with you when we get to the end of this row. So I finished all my single crochets. I've even got into the last chain three space. Turn your work around, chain one and single crochet into the first stitch. What we're going to do now is we're going to single crochet in the next one, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next. And also the next one, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet in the next, so into the next two. So that's two, chain one, Skip one, single crochet in the next two. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next two. We're going to repeat this all the way to our chain two space. Let's chain one, skip one, all the way to our chain two space. And these chain ones, where are they? Here. The chain ones that we've skipped one, this is where our buttons are going to go. I'm up to my chain two space and I've just done a chain one skip one so then 
Do a single crochet, so single crochet again because I need two in a row. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next two. So you're basically just repeating it around. You're just repeating around the corner there. Okay, so we can continue on until we get back to the corner. So I've just repeated that all, all the way across. Don't forget to single crochet in your last stitch. And now we're going to complete the, the last row of the border, which is the bit with the little wobbly bit sticking out. So we're going to single crochet into the first stitch. We're going to single crochet in the next stitch. Single crochet in the next next one. So it's actually the chain one space here. Chain three. Slip stitch down into the first chain and work a slip stitch. Single crochet into your next two stitches. Single crochet in the chain one space. Chain three slip stitch back into the first chain and when I slip stitch I go into the V of the chain so in between the V and then I get the two the the other loop at the back so I've got two loops on my crochet hook and then I slip stitch again single crochet in the next two and also the chain one space chain up three you could change that to two or four if you like, just to change it, make it look a bit different. Slip stitch into the first chain, making sure you've got two loops, and then work a slip stitch. Now I find if I hold on to that little bobbly bit when I do the slip stitch, it makes it easier for me to do. Single crochet into the next two stitches, and the chain one space, chain three, and slip stitch getting the two loops see how I sort of move the yarn around to the, to the front there and then slip stitch we're going to work this all the way across when we get to the end we end on four single crochets and that will match up with the beginning somewhere there's some scissors Snip that off. If you want to, you can work a row of single crochet along the, this is the top edge. You can work a row of single crochet along there. I would suggest putting two or three stitches in each hole as you work your way across. But I'm not going to do that for this particular shawl. Somewhere we have a sewing needle. So I'm going to use this tail here and I'm going to try and sew the button on. So I've got a little, I've got a needle here, it's still a, a yarn needle, but it's got a small eye on it. So I'm going to see if that will work with my button. It may not. Because I'm not sure if my holes are going to be big enough. And what I need to do is I just need to put my yarn so it's coming out where I want my button to be coming out from. What are the chances? Nope, the needle doesn't even fit through. I didn't grab the right needle, that's why I couldn't get it to work properly. So... <laughs> Try the other one, it might be good. So we're just pulling that through. We just want to sew it onto the end there, so just make sure it's on the end. And we just stitch that on. I thought I was going crazy for a sec there, because when I tested it out, it actually went through the hole and then it wouldn't go. So, but I apparently have three sewing needles that I didn't know I had. 
we've only had two. So that's on there. Let's see if I can go through one more time. Yeah, I thought I was pushing my luck. <laughs> so I'll stitch this onto the back. Of course you could use needle and thread if you had some. I've got a feeling I don't have this bright blue colour, so I'm just trying to go with the option of just using the yarn. So once you've stitched it through a few times, just hold that loop there. And then put that through there. My yarn's a bit short so it wouldn't work with the needle still attached. And then I'm going to just sew my ends through some stitches. Try and sew in as much as you can. Then grab your scissors, trim off the end. And then also sew in any other ends that you have that need to be done. And what that is, when you put it around your neck, there is it. There's the first hole somewhere here. There it is. More thumbs today. There we go. We're going to put that through. And that will tie up around the back of your neck so here's my finished shawl I hope you enjoyed this project I know I did the blue one is going to be for me of course and the pink one I haven't decided who I'm going to give it to yet but I'm sure whoever receives it will love it because that yarn is absolutely delicious so please rate the video give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it share it with your friends leave a comment if you've got any questions and thank you for watching check out my website all the links that you need are in the description box we've also got a newsletter that comes out at the end of each month and there's also the links and all that in the description box please subscribe there'll be plenty more videos to come we have two videos that come out each week so there's lots of crochet goodness for you to learn again thanks for watching and until next time happy crochet